Hello again, Brian here with Umbrilliance. In part five of introducing the controls for Stitch Artist Level 1, we're going to round out all the rest of the stitch types, including freestanding backgrounds, stippling, motif runs, motif fills, and cross stitch. This is a simple design I've made to illustrate four different styles of stippling that we have in Stitch Artist Level 1 and above. And what we'll see in the left corner here is sort of a curvy pattern. In the right top corner, it's a drunkard. It's a little bit more wandering in and out, not quite as regular. In the bottom right corner, we have a geometric. And in the bottom left, we have a pointed leaves. Let's take a closer look at one of those. And we'll take a look at the stippling properties. Of course, we have our tie-offs and our top stitching. The pattern is selected from a drop-down box, and you see we can go through those. And when we want to increase the space between the lines of stitching, that's a spacing control. So you can set that how you like, and also the stitch length of the stitching and that should be set uh, basically how you would set it on your sewing machine as you're doing your piecing and other top stitching on the quilt. Now we also have the entry and exit. Now the stippling uses the same entry and exit because it wanders around and comes back to its starting point. So if we move the entry, you'll see the exit handle will follow. And here you can see I've created a jump stitch. So the entry and the exit move as one. We also have an inclination, and the inclination is used to change the pattern up within the area. So if I drag this over, you'll see the pattern can change. That's useful if you have straight lines like this where you want to do something against the edge. And sometimes the pattern doesn't look exactly how you want, so you may want to adjust the angle a little bit to get something different. Another feature that we have is that when you have a stippling object selected, you can then click Run. And instead of taking the outline of the shape, it actually converts the stitches of the stippling into a run, which means you can now go in and edit those changes and do anything you like to pretty up the stippling or go around a certain part a little bit better if you want. So that's an overview of the stippling. Not a lot of properties, but what's there is really useful. And of course, once you're on a run, you can change that and do other things with it. Let's create a motif run and look at the properties for that. If we select motif run on an object, we'll get a set of evenly spaced running stitches across it. That's because we haven't added a motif yet. When we click on motif, level one will have just two properties, the top stitching and the trim or tie commands, and you will see more, com uh, more controls in level two, but we're working with level one right now. Now to add a motif, click add. The motifs are now broken out into separate categories. So if we want a decorative motif or something satin, we can go grab that scallop and apply it to the stitch. Now, something we can do that's a little bit unique is add as many different motifs as we want. Let's go get a candle wick. And so what you'll see is the motif will alternate across the line. We can also take individual motifs and change their size. That's a really big candle wick. Let's bring that back down. And we can increase the spacing that follows each of those. We can even take one and remove it and go back and add something else. And let's select that and increase its size. And you can stretch motifs out or squish them down and even rotate them on the line. And where there are Motifs that are different going forward than backwards, you can also mirror them. So that's the basics of motifs. 
In level two, there are gradients to motifs, which lets them change size as you go across the line. So at one end, they'd be larger than the other. But for level one, it's a nice, basic, and useful function. A motif fill is going to use a lot of the same properties that we just looked at in a motif. Here we'll take and create an object. I'll just select it and uh, we'll apply a motif fill to it. Now you'll see that this starts with just lines of stitching because we haven't added a motif. So let's go ahead and add something. And how about that? And that's a motif. And we can size it, of course, which adds more of them. The density control, which is new to a motif fill, it doesn't exist in a run, of course, adds space between the motif lines of stitching. And of course, we do have angle that we can use. We also have a gradient effect. And with the gradient, you'll see that the bottom is more open space and the top is a little tighter. And you can adjust the spacing and even come back and play around with the other density. So you've got a couple of additional things you can do with motif fills. Don't forget that you can go back and add motifs in line. Let's take this whole thing and make it a little bit bigger. And you'll see the motifs will recalculate as we change the object. Something fun to play with. We have two different kinds of cross stitch objects. Let's go get a shape, just choose a simple heart, and apply a cross stitch to it. And that's a pretty ordinary way to use cross stitch. But what you'll find is that adjacent objects will add crosses without having to worry about the separation. In other words, the crosses will maintain points as if there was a continuous cloth going on. So here, if I just add some points along the outside edge of this, and we set that to a cross stitch, you'll see that the crosses will touch. So using lines or closed shapes, you can adjust the cross stitch, and they take the same properties, a top stitch property and a tie. And then, of course, we have the size in stitches per inch or in millimeters. Generally, if you're working on a cloth, you've got a stitches per inch in mind. And then the number of passes is single, double, or triple. This is how many times the whole pattern will repeat over itself to give you a thicker effect, just as if you were doing cross stitch with more strands of thread. So not a lot of properties there, but kind of a handy set of tools to have. You can even freehand if you want. We'll right click and add a cross stitch to it and write your name, write some words, anything you like. The final stitch in level one that we're going to look at is a freestanding stitch. Let's get a shape and make that a little bit larger and click freestanding. The freestanding background has some simple properties, the top stitch and the ties as usual. It can be a double stitch which stitches over everything twice and that's more in line with what we would normally do to create true freestanding backgrounds but if you're going to use this on top of an organza you might just want to use a single pass of stitching and save all that thread and time you can also adjust the density in case you were just trying to run some decorative rows of stitching within the embroidery uh, you can make that large if you're going to use this as a true freestanding you probably want to keep the density down in the twos or under. The stitch length would be used for the same purpose. If we're going to make this a larger stitch, we might want to increase the stitch length just to save on the stitch count or because it works with the effect that we're after. Uh, generally, you're going to keep that in the twos or under for freestanding work. And then the diamond pattern is just offsetting those points a little bit to give sort of a net look and that can still be used with freestanding as a background and it's just a different look and it's just a nice choice to have when you're doing a freestanding background or a set of rows in a piece you'll notice we also have an inclination on this just as if it was a fill so you can change the angle that runs at 
And that can be useful if you're using this as an underlay that's going under some other piece like a leaf or something that you're making that's going to be three-dimensional embroidery where it comes up off the fabric and you want to have the background going in the direction of the stitching of the top stitched piece. So you can use this completely as an underlay if you like. Thanks for watching this video. We're going to pick up on the next video using some more of the commands, including some of the context menus and keyboard commands. See you soon.